Welcome. We're here at the Saratoga Springs, Utah South Stake building of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We're here to do a segment on communication. My name is Ron Edwards. I'm the stake president. To my right is Darvell Hunt. He's the stake communication specialist. And to my left is Joe Galloway. He's assistant stake communication specialist. The purpose of, the, uh, of us gathering together today is to familiarize you with the various lines of communication that you may keep your family safe from harm's way in case of an incident or an accident or an emergency. And as a result of that, there are many ways that we can uh, establish lines of communication and we're here to help you to select the best line of communication for your family preparedness. I'm going to be talking about uh, the reason why we have the different lines of communication. Brother Joe Galloway is going to be talking about uh, the different types of communication and how they can be utilized in your family. Darvell Hunt's going to be talking about amateur radio and how it fits into the, today's technology. The whole reason why we felt it important to talk about communication and the different facets of communication is if you've ever seen the look on a mother's face when she can't find one of her children, I have. It's very scary. And for this reason, we have come to you today hoping that by you viewing this uh, video that you will Take time to practice the various lines of communication with your family so that you will have more than just one avenue to help your family to be prepared for any emergency or incident that may come to your family. At this time, I'd like to reintroduce Joe Galloway, who will be talking to you about the various lines of communication and how they can benefit your family preparedness. As President Edwards has indicated, there are several modalities that are available to us. In the world we live in, we're so used to getting information and uh, having that information available immediately. The first uh, line of defense or communication is going to be your cell phone. Most everybody has a cell phone and there are several modalities that can be utilized with the cell phone. Of course, the verbal communication is the first. There's also texting and uh, tweeting and uh, several other modalities. It would be important in your family to choose at least one or two of these modalities, become familiar with them, and be able to utilize them in your family. Uh, in the event of an emergency, we may lose the phone communications. In that event, there are some other options that we have. The, uh, Handheld walkie-talkies are a good line of communication. They don't rely on the towers and etc. that may go down during an emergency. Also, citizen band radios uh, are available. These two modalities do not require a license to operate. The uh, third line of communication, of course, is going to be the uh, ham radio operators. And President Edwards has done a lot of work to establish an ERC network in most of our wards and throughout the stake and the city. Uh, you should check with your bishops to find out where these individuals are located and it might be a good family home evening to take your children and actually go visit these different sites and become familiar with the individuals that are operating those radios. Those areas then are going to be another line of communication. In the event that we have uh, a total disaster and none of those communication uh, modalities are available, you should uh, have some kind of a pool in the neighborhood. Uh, we've set up block captains and uh, neighborhood committees and it would be good to review those and make sure that Everyone has an assignment. Mostly the women are going to be home during a particular time and they can, uh, of course, take care of children, make sure family members are taken care of and etc. 
but these things need to be done in advance of the emergency. I know that uh, when we had that flood here in the valley, it was very interesting. Uh, Saratoga Springs was divided into two parts and the police officers in the northern half could not access the southern half and vice versa. So we may be on our own in the event that we have some of these disasters. So it's a good idea to pre-prepare and utilize the different uh, communication modalities and become familiar with them. Your teenagers are very much aware of texting and uh, these kinds of things and could uh, give advice in a family home evening. So again, do it now, not at the time that you have to have it. Thank you, Brother Galloway. Appreciate your comments on how we can utilize the various uh, lines of communication for our world today. And at this time, I would like to introduce Darvell Hunt, who will be talking to us about amateur radio and the practical use in today's technological world. Hello. As of this year, I've been licensed in ham radio for 30 years. And as you might well imagine, that a lot of things have changed in those 30 years. Uh, in fact, the original reason that my family got licensed back in 1983 was for family communications because most people back then did not have cell phones. Uh, the only people that had them were big limousine drivers and, uh, and uh, other people that, uh, that had the money. Um, but so my family got licensed and we had all communication through, throughout uh, the 80s and 90s uh, until cell phones kind of seemed to replace them. So you might think, well, why do we need ham radio now? We have cell phones, we have all these technologies. Why is ham radio even useful? And in fact, I was beginning to think that myself, but uh, there is a lot of things that have been happening in ham radio since then. And in fact, uh, when we had our emergencies here with the fire and the flood, and I was trying to get in contact with the, the stake presidency to, to initiate our, our emergency nets, I could not get through with the cell phones. And when I did get through, the phone calls would drop. So when we have an emergency, either the lines will be allocated to emergency personnel or there will be so many people trying to find out where their family is, where their, whether their kids have left school and things like that, that the cell phones will be completely um, used so that there will be not any chance for you to make commu communications that you may be relying upon. This is where ham radio can come into play. And so when we have an emergency, the first line of of communication for us is with our families. We need to make sure they're okay. We need to, to make sure everything that they have is, pr is provided for. And then when we have uh, our family secure, we check with our neighbors. And once we have contact with them and we find that they're okay, then we can branch out from there. And we go to the block captains, and from there we can go to the wards and on out to the stake level. And the way that we, uh, through the through the state communication organization that we have created, that communication is done by ham radio. Um, so that the bishops and the stake president and the block captains all can rely upon the ham radio that we know is available um, during an emergency. Um, in fact, we have had the experience of having ham radio in our stake be used during an emergency when we had the recent flooding and the recent fires. If you have an interest in ham radio, we would love for you to join us. It's uh, not that hard as, as you might think it would be. Um, in fact, my son, uh, a couple of years ago, took a one-day class, started in the morning, and by the afternoon, he had passed the test, and within the next week, he had got his license from the FCC. So we would love for you to join us if you have the interest, um, and if you want to contact us, you can learn more information about how to get your own license and how you can be a part of our ham radio organization within the stake. I would like to thank uh, Darvell Hunt and Joe Galloway for their contributions to this uh, video today on communications. I've been very passionate about communications uh, coming from Southern California and being in many of the disasters in that area with uh, many earthquakes, uh, forest fires that burnt right down into the valley and consumed some 257 homes. Um, I've seen these, uh, the aftermaths of the fires and, and uh, the flooding and the mudslides and, uh, and, and the concern 
that uh, people have had as a result of all of these, these uh, disasters. And that's why I believe that I'm so passionate and when I passionate about it. And as I moved here, I realized that we were right at the foot of the mountain and we could have some of the similar things here that we had in, in Southern California. So I began to start uh, getting involved in, in ham radio and set up an ERC net, which is Emergency Resource Communications Network. I'm so proud of our stake. We have currently 36 licensed ham operators in our, in our stake that participate in a weekly net. And I am so proud of them for, for them taking of their time to participate in this, uh, in this weekly net. We also have a net uh, that is citywide where all of the other stakes, uh, the Crossroads stake, the North stake, the Central stake, and our stake all participate along with the police department and the fire department in a uh, monthly ERC net. And I'm grateful that we have this line of communication because in, in the case of a, a, a severe incident, maybe an earthquake where we're cut off completely from uh, all resources, I'm very happy to know that we have a line of communication right here and we can be self-sustaining. But it, the most important part is that families need to be in communication one with another to know that their families are safe and that their members are, are safe because many are at work, many are at school. And, and today, they just may not know where they are. And for the peace of mind to know that their family members are safe is so very, very important. And this is why I feel so passionate about communications and the various lines of communications and how you must practice them in your families in order to know what works best for you. I have to say that when 9-11 happened, when Katrina, uh, when uh, all of the various national disasters that we have had, and even in Davis County uh, during the, the uh, severe uh, windstorms, uh, 75 to 80, 90 mile an hour windstorms, the local emergency response communication was called in because the sheriff's department could not handle all of the dispatches that were going on. And they placed a ham operator with each of the sheriffs to be able to respond to citizens in, in need and, and needing, needing help. Um, and as a result of that, and our recent uh, incidents that we have had here with our flooding, with our fires, and, uh, and individuals not knowing where their children were and, and having to evacuate, all of that uh, has been a real concern for us. And I'm very thankful to these two gentlemen here, uh, Darvell Hunt and Joe Galloway, for helping to make sure that our uh, Saratoga Springs, Utah South Stake is safe. I uh, am just grateful to them and to all that participate in, in our ERC uh, communications network. And say thank you and hope that this video will help you in knowing where your children are at all times and your loved ones so that you won't have that despaired look on your face not knowing where your loved ones are. Thank you and hope you enjoy this video.